Good morning. We say yes this morning. We say yes. I pray you have a yes in your spirit this morning. Pursue. We say yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your presence this morning. God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you this morning that you give us a press in our spirit, Lord. We thank you, God, that we will win the battles that have been set before us, God, because you fight them for us. And we thank you for that this morning, Daddy. Lord, I thank you for these, your people, who are logging on, God. I thank you for these, your people, who will view this message later, God. We thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, God. We have a yes in our spirit this morning, God. We pursue. We will pursue. We will pursue. We will pursue. Hallelujah. We will not shrink back in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for your strength this morning, God. We thank you for your mercy this morning, God. We thank you for your forgiveness this morning. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your strength, God. For things that we've done, things we said, things we thought, God, that we should not have. Hallelujah. When we doubted, God. Hallelujah. When we questioned you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because we thought our, ba our way was better than your way, God. We thank you this morning for the press. Hallelujah. We thank you for this ninth day this ninth month 11th day hallelujah god in the name of jesus god god we pray for those who lost their lives many years ago god in the twin towers lord gosh wow it is that day wow jesus we thank you we thank you for a new birth in god we thank you for new life god we thank you for giving us the strength to produce, God. We thank you for giving us the strength to get up, Lord. Hallelujah. To not stay down today. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your love, God. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for more than enough. Thank you for your strength. Hallelujah. Thank you for another yes. Hallelujah. We say yes, God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb, God. We say yes this morning. We thank you for the peace of God. Hallelujah. We thank you for the press of God. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that you are great. Your miracles are great, God. We thank you that you are good. We thank you that there is none like you, God, in all the earth, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to the Lamb of God. Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name. Glory to the Lamb of God, Father. We thank you for your word this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God. Hallelujah, God. I speak to everyone under the sound of my voice, God, for those who who you have called to be on this morning, God, for those you have awakened and they need to be shaken. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Good morning, good morning, evangelist. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you that your word is sure. We thank you that your word is going to fall on good ground. God, we thank you that your word brings life, God. We thank you that it brings new life, God. We thank you that your word breathes into us, God. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, God, that we lose nothing. Hallelujah, we gain much, God. We thank you that we have the power to take back our territory. In the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, God, that we have the power to pull down strongholds this morning. We thank you, God, that with you, God, we can conquer anything, God. I pray that someone turns their ear to you this morning. Someone turns their mind to you this morning. Someone turns their heart to you this morning. Someone turns, hallelujah, their soul to you this morning. Hallelujah, for their answer is in you, God. We say yes this morning. Hallelujah, we shall pursue. We shall overtake. Hallelujah, God. We thank you. We thank you for those who will share. Hallelujah, who will tag, who will invite somebody. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you. We 
thank you, we thank you. We thank you. There are those, God, who have stopped pressing, God, who have stopped moving forward, God. Hallelujah, God. They've gotten stuck where they are. But this morning, God, we tell them pursue and overtake. Hallelujah. We tell them pursue and overtake. We tell them to turn the tables this morning. God has a word for you that is going to give you strength to stand up. When everything seems like there is defeat on this side and that side, hallelujah, God, obstacles in front and somebody's pursuing you from the back. God said, turn the tables this morning. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, he is going to give you strategy. He is going to give you strength. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, he is going to give you the stick to to win this next battle, to just finish strong. Hallelujah. To finish strong. Somebody needs to hear that. You need to finish strong. Hallelujah. You need to finish strong. Hallelujah. Don't let them run you off your job. In the name of Jesus, don't let them run. Don't let the enemy run you out of your marriage. Hallelujah. Go get that woman. Go get her. You ain't going nowhere. If you leave, I'm going with you. Good God Almighty. He leave, I'm going with you. Don't let the enemy cause you to um to lay down your armor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To put down your shield of faith. Don't allow the enemy to make you do that. Don't allow him ah, to cause you to use your sword as a weapon against those you love. Use your weapon, the word of God, against the enemy. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Stop using words against people that you say you love and you know love you. Hallelujah, because you're hurt. Hallelujah, because your ego has been bruised. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, because your emotions are all over the place. God said this morning he's going to give you strength, he's going to give you strategy, and he's going to give you stick to itiveness. Hallelujah. That's a good word already. Hallelujah, God. We thank you that your word is blessed. And God, we thank you. We love you this morning. Hallelujah. There is absolutely, positively, none like my God. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome this morning. Welcome this morning. Welcome men of God. Welcome women of God. Hallelujah. We are going to 1 Samuel chapter 30. Now, I'm going to tell you, when I first uh, started, um, think when, well, this is just kind of how it happens. I'm often in church and God will drop something in my spirit. And I was actually on my way to church. It was Monday, Sunday, Jesus. Good morning. Sunday. And the Lord said, pursue. And I said, pursue. Who's to pursue? Is that me pursue? Is that the people of God pursue? And he said, the people of God, you too, Tuesday, but pursue. And I said, okay, pursue. So where, um, at the light, I, I just started kind of Googling pursue and, um, what the Lord originally just, it just, even during the service, this word in, uh, good morning, uh, sister Stacy, the word that kept stirring in my spirit was from Leviticus. Now, this isn't where we're going to teach from, but I want to uh, just drop this in your spirit as I go to 1 Samuel chapter 30. The word says in Leviticus chapter uh, 26, uh, I I'm going to start what, what God is talking about. We know that Leviticus is the book really for the priest. It's the law. It's a part of the law. It's giving instructions. It's kind of repeating uh, from what is said um, in other uh, other parts of the Pentateuch, like Deuteronomy and things like that. But but he's talking about uh, the punishment of disobedience. The punishment of disobedience. Now we go. To, we can talk about that a whole nother morning. But hallelujah. But what 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 grabbed me in this scripture was he said, uh, "If you will not listen to me and carry out my commands, these are the things that are going to happen to you." And one of the things he said is that I will set my face against you. This is God. He's talking to his people. He said, I will set my face against you through your enemies. So I'm not going to come after you. I'm not going to lay my hand on you. I'm just going to let your enemies come against you. He said, and those who hate you will rule over you. He said, and you will flee. Listen, this is what got me. <clears throat> He said, you will flee even though there's no one pursuing you. 
He said, you will flee even though there's no one pursuing you. And I thought about that. I said, Lord have mercy. How many times have we ran in fear because of the boogeyman? Good God Almighty. Because we were scared of something. We, we, we turned and went the other, other direction because we were afraid. And God wants you to know this morning, you are to turn the tables on your enemy. They, listen, you are a child of God. You don't have to run. You don't have to, you don't have, to, now there are things that the, God, the Lord does say flee. Sexual immorality, lust, amen, adultery, <laughs> hallelujah. You are to flee, hallelujah, like Joseph, run up out your clothes, hallelujah, and out of the way of those things that, that are trying to pursue you that are not of God. But he said, you don't have to be afraid of anything anymore. You don't have to be afraid of failure. You don't have to be afraid of success. You don't have to be afraid of, uh, will I get the house? Will I not get the house? Will I get the loan? Will I not get the loan? Will I? Will this work? Will that work? God said, pursue. He said, now, the art of pursuing is obedience. The art of you being able to pursue rests in three things. Hear me. Three things rest in you being able to pursue. Ready? First is, you must ask God, am I to pursue? Is that my wife? Is that my husband? Is this my job? Is that my house? Am I supposed to get that car? Before you pursue, before you make the decision, before you advance and move forward in something, the first thing you must do is ask God. That's the first thing you must do, Sister Stacy. That is the first thing you must do, Frank. That is the first thing you do, Rance. That is the first thing you do. That is the first thing you do, Yvette. That is the first thing you do. All of those who are under the sound of my voice and all those who will join, the first thing you do before you pursue, uh, Katie, good morning, is that you ask God. You ask God, am I to pursue? The next thing you do is obey. That's what you do. When the Lord speaks, you obey. If he don't speak, you wait. When, if he don't speak, you wait. If he, if he speaks... You move. So you ask God, you obey, and then all of it is done by faith. The first thing you do before you pursue is ask God. Good morning, Sister Andre. That's the first thing you do. The next thing you do is obey. When he tells you go, when he tells you move, when he tells you speak, when he tells you not to speak. But if he does not give you instructions, you wait. And all of it. You do by faith. And so you do not have to be afraid. The Lord wants you to know. Even though Leviticus tells us that God will allow your enemy to pursue you. And you will run even though there is no one chasing you. Many of you have gotten stuck right where you are. You are stuck right where you are. You are not moving because you're afraid. You're afraid of failure. You're afraid of success. You're afraid of what people going to think. You're afraid, you're afraid of who ain't going to understand. You're just afraid. You're just stuck. And God needs for you today to get unstuck. He needs for you to ask him, am I to pursue? Am I to go back to school? Am I to start this company? Am I to write that book? He is to tell. He is waiting on you to ask him, am I to pursue? Isn't that good news this morning? That's good news. That excites me. That all God is doing, he's just waiting on me. He waiting on me. Now, that I'm telling y'all, that should make somebody excited this morning. He's just waiting on you to ask him. And then say, Lord, give me the strength to obey. Whatever you tell me to do, give me the strength to obey. Let me not be fearful. The Bible says that God, you will hear a voice behind you that will tell you which way to go. That is the, 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 the love of your God at, who will speak into your life as, as, a, as a teacher. As an instructor. So let's go on and just walk on through 1 Samuel uh, chapter 30. The word of the Lord says, David and his men reached Ziklag, Ziklag on the third day. Now the Amalekites had raided, had raided Ziklag and had attacked it and burned it up. They had taken captive all of the women, all of the children, Young and old, they had taken everybody. 
They didn't kill any of them. They just took them captive. Is that not how you feel sometimes? That something has attacked you. Now, nothing's died <clears throat> in the physical. But spiritually, emotionally, emotionally, you're dead. Emotionally in that marriage. Somebody already know. I hear you, Lord. You better tag somebody. You better tag somebody. You better invite somebody. I hear the Lord as clear as day. Somebody in your family, in your circle needs this word. The marriage is dead. Everybody living, everybody breathing. You might even be sleeping in the same bed, but you dead. Your emotions are dead. You're still hurt about the thing that was done last year, five years ago, ten years ago. And God said, everybody's still alive, but the enemy has taken captive your marriage. The enemy has taken captive your relationship. The enemy has taken captive your finances. He has taken captive your health. He's taken captive your joy. You're depressed. Somebody you know uh, that, that is depressed in your life, you need to tell them, to log on. Tag them. Invite them. Share this. I'm telling you, somebody is going to be blessed this morning to know that they can get up and they can pursue because today God gives you permission. God gives you permission. Hallelujah. God wants to shake your spirit this morning. Hallelujah. I speak to the spirit of depression. I speak to the to pity self-pity. I don't have enough. Nobody's here to help me. I'm like the man at the pool of Bethesda. The Lord said, stop it. Stop waiting on somebody else to do what he has given you. Instruction, wisdom, strategy. Hallelujah. He's come to you in a dream. He's come to you through somebody else to tell you, you can do this. You can do this. You People have come to you to say, how can I help you? And you won't receive their help out of fear or pride. But the root of pride is fear. God said, get up. That's right, evangelist. Get up and pursue. Get up and pursue. Enough of waddling and oh, he left me. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not belittling your situation. I'm not minimizing your situation that he walked out and left you with the kids. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not diminishing that. I'm not diminishing, brother, that you lost your job and you went from this amount of salary to this or to nothing. Not diminishing that, whoever that is. But God said enough. Get up. Get up. Things around you are dying and you are alive. You're on your own Green Mile experience. Remember the movie Green Mile? They had to walk that Green Mile. They was already dead. They, they was alive, but they was on their way to die. And God said, get up. Do not accept defeat. He said, you have the right to pursue this morning. So they, there they are. And David returns to his camp in Ziglag, Ziklag. He returns there. Now, this is what you need to understand. They found it destroyed. They found it burned up. They found that their children and their wives, him and his soldiers, that they had been taken captive. Now, they knew they weren't dead because they didn't see any bodies, so they had to conclude. Okay, they took our family. They, they made them prisoners. Your wife is, is in her own personal prison because of something that has happened in her life. Good morning, Sister Sandra. Your husband is in his own personal prison because of something that has happened in his life. You need to speak life and stop complaining. You need to speak life and stop saying, why ain't the house clean? Why ain't I got nothing fixed for dinner? Something's going on in her. Something's going on in him. Why can't you find a job? Now listen, I ain't saying you're supposed to stay on the couch forever and watch, you know, ESPN, man of God. I'm not saying that, sister. I'm not saying he shouldn't get out there and work. But if you with somebody who's always worked and, uh, and had a pattern of doing things that advanced their life and advanced the, your life or advanced the life of uh, your marriage, your relationship, and all of a sudden, things start to shut down. And they're not doing that anymore. God said, you got to pray. You got you to gotta pursue God on their behalf. Listen, this is the power of agreement. This is the power of agreement. See, I don't, I know people say, and I believe this, you know, keep 
the issues of your marriage in your marriage. You take it to God. But I just believe that there are people, there has to be somebody that you can turn to and come into agreement with you about what is going on in your marriage, in your finances, in your health, and in your job. That they can hold water. That they can truly be a prayer partner and a confidant. Now, I ain't talk if you know that person is always talking about that person and telling that person's business, that clearly ain't the person you need to be going to. I mean, it ain't deep, right? But God needs for you to understand you can get up. You do not have to stay stuck. We talk about staying stuck on stupid, but God wants you to know you do not have to stay stuck on depression. You do not have to stay stuck on lack. You do not have to stay stuck in doubt. You don't have to stay stuck in worry. You don't have to let the things around you to continue to die and there's no life coming to it simply because you won't get up and pursue. You won't ask God. You won't obey when he tells you to do it. You won't walk by faith. You want to stay stuck. Do you want to stay stuck? Will thou be made whole? How many times do I have to ask this question? I feel like I almost ask this question every time I speak every Tuesday morning. Do the, will thou be made whole? Do you want to be made whole? Then get up. Take up your bed. Good God Almighty. So here we are in 1 Samuel chapter 30. Tag somebody. Invite somebody. Share this. You know somebody who's stuck. You know somebody who's depressed. You know somebody who's worried. You know somebody who's stuck in fear. Feel like somebody's chasing them like uh, Leviticus 26 said. And ain't nobody behind you. And they're not mentally ill. They just stuck. They just scurred. Tag somebody, invite somebody, tell a friend right now. So he says, David, the Bible says that David became very distressed in his spirit because all of the men, his soldiers, 300 and some men, if not more, I think it was like three or 600 men, they were all talking about stoning him because you, we went to war with you. We went to go handle some stuff with you and we didn't came back. And now our children and our wives are, are gone and the camp is burned up. Oh yeah, we want to take David out. You ever felt like people, everybody blames you for everything? And you like, well, I didn't send the enemy into the camp. I didn't, I didn't leave the door open for the enemy to come into our marriage. I, I didn't do that. You did that. Ah, but you being blamed. Uh-huh. I didn't get you fired. You got you fired. I, I can't help it because our investments was in that and, and, and the stock plummeted and we lost thousands or, or tens of thousands of dollars. Why are you mad at me? Yeah, I know I might have made that suggestion, but we agreed. <gasps> Why are you mad at me? So a lot of times you will find yourself... <clears throat> Relationships are very interesting. I, I love them. That's why I'm, I'm a relationship coach. I love the dynamics of relationships. And if I can help people start to untangle the drama of their relationships, it, it's a good thing. Because a lot of times we're placing the blame on the wrong person. Instead of going after the devil, instead of dealing with him, instead of turning the tables on the enemy and saying, oh, no, 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 no. We're not getting ready to fight each other up in here. We're going after you, enemy, in Jesus' name. We're coming with all guns ablazing against you, enemy. And sometimes the enemy is within me. It's pride. It's unresolved issues, unhealed hurts, and unmet needs that you brought into that marriage, into that relationship, into that situation, and you're blaming them for something your previous wife did. You're blaming them for something your previous husband did. You're blaming them because when they left and got bread, they didn't come back. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, you're blaming you're blaming her for something that that other woman did. And now she has to live out and deal with all of your anger that you take it out on her because you weren't able to take it out on that one. And God said, stop it. Stop blaming them. They didn't do that. They didn't do that. And if they are feeling a particular way, partly they're feeling that way because of something, nine out of ten, that... You have either done against them or you peeled back a wound. You touched a wound. You've dealt, you, you, you've uh, infiltrated an area that they thought was healed. 
Now, both of y'all need to go talk to somebody and get some counseling. Good God Almighty. So here we are in the text. And the Bible says that the men were mad at David. And David was, was like hurt in his spirit. He, he was broken. He was, okay, well, what do I do? What do I do? Do I, I mean, I don't know what to do. So the Bible says, David, David. David had his own worries. See, while y'all mad at them, while they was mad at David, they forgot David's wives. <laughs> David had a couple of wives that had been taken. Uh, Abigail had been taken, uh, who was the widow. Y'all remember Na uh, uh, Nabal, the one whose name meant fool. Abigail had been taken. Uh, uh, Jezreel had been taken. So he had a couple of wives that had been taken and all of his children, his daughters, his sons. So while y'all want to stone him, part of him probably did want to die. Watch how you treat people. Sometimes how you're treating them will just push them over the edge. I wish you would die. You might, you need to leave. I'm sick of you. Okay. And when they pack their bags and leave, you just gave them the invitation. You thought they wasn't going to do it. And now they didn't done done it. And you, you are even worse off than you were before you went in the situation. I know I'm helping somebody this morning. Tag somebody, invite somebody to come on in. He said, so, so David inquired of the Lord. He said to the priest, bring me my ephod. Bring me my prayer shawl. This is what you need to do. This is how you pursue. This is what you're going to do to get up off that couch and stop being depressed. This is what you're going to do to advance in your purpose. This is what you're going to do to find out what am I to do. This is what you're going to do. You're going to pray. You're going to ask God, what is it that I do? Because see, all this time, you've been doing everything by your power, by your might, by your strength. By your wisdom. But you need the wisdom of God in this next season. You need the wisdom of God to tell you how to get my husband back. How to get my wife back. Well, first of all, is it your will? Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Is it your will? Now, listen. I've said this many a times. I, the woman that's being abused and beaten. And it could be a brother too. I don't know. But the one who's getting beat down and, and abused. No, 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 no. I'm telling you to stay in a violent situation. But Lord, what am I to do? Am I to go back? Am I to allow them to come back? What am I to do? Am I to move to that other state? Am I to move? Am I to leave this job? Do I leave before I get another job? Do I, do I look while I'm employed? Now, wisdom, natural wisdom says, yeah, that's what you do. You look. Why you still got a job? Don't you go leaving no job and you ain't got no job, particularly in this economy. So I get that. But God may tell you to do something different. So, so before you get up <clears throat> to pursue, get up so you can get down on your knees and pray. Now, I'm one of them people. I don't care if you sit on the couch and pray. I don't care if you sit on the, your side of your bed and pray. But at some point, your knees and your feet need to move. <laughs> whether, whether it moves off the side of the bed, whether it sits up on the couch or they get to the floor. You need to get to God. The Bible says that David said, bring me my ephod. Bring me the thing that I can come into the presence of God with and have my own sanctuary and seek God and drown out all of this noise behind me because these people want to kill me. And if I keep looking at them and if I keep listening to them, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to welcome you in to kill me because I want life to be over. I didn't, I didn't left this battle. Now I didn't came home and I got to battle again because my family is destroyed. I leave my job. I battle with that. I got to come home and battle with her. I leave my job. I got to come home and battle with him. I leave my job. I got to come home and battle with my kids. I'm tired of battling. Good God almighty. Lord, I need reprieve. I, I need a relief. Your relief, beloved, is going to be found in you praying. Grabbing your ephod, grabbing your Bible. Hallelujah. Seeking God. So the Bible says that David inquired of the Lord. He inquired of the Lord. 
I love that. He asked God. He asked God, what is it that you would have for me to do? He inquired of the Lord. I love the um, God's word version. It says, it says it like this. It says, um, no, I don't want to do that one. Sorry. Sorry, beloved. Sorry. He says, he says, do I pursue? Do I pursue God? He said, David said, stop doing that computer. He said, shall I pursue? He asked the Lord specifically, shall I pursue these troops? Will I catch up with them? That's how God's word says it. Translation. The, another one says, um, um, shall I pursue those who raided me? Shall I go after those who have attacked me? He said, should I go after them? He said, and will I overtake them? Now listen. He didn't, he, he had two, cause that's, see, you gotta know, this is the beauty of God. Be specific with him. What do you want God to do? Okay. Lord, I want you to restore my marriage. Do I, do I go back? Do I, do I fight for my marriage? Do I pursue my, my, my husband? Do I go and pursue my wife? Do I go get her and bring her back home? Okay, great. But I got another question. Is she going to come with me? <laughs> is he going to come back? Will, will I be victorious in this? Now, what's interesting, it's okay to ask God questions. Stop letting people tell you you can't ask God questions. You can ask God whatever you want. He's your daddy. Okay? Now, what you have to recognize is that don't mean he's going to answer all your questions. You got to learn to rest in the fact he may not answer all your questions. But God still says today, this is your word. This is your word. The word of the Lord says, gee, God, David asked him. He asked him, and he said, and this is what the Lord said. Pursue. You will certainly overtake them, and you will succeed in the rescue. Now listen, David didn't ask all of that. David didn't say, am I going to get my son, my wife back? Am I going to get my kids back? He said, I, I got two questions. Do I go after them? And if I go after them, will I catch up with them? If I go after them, will you give me the power to overtake them? If I go after them, will I be victorious? That's all he said. But God in his loving, loving way, he says, yeah, go get them. Go get them, David. Go get them, Yvette. Go get them. Go get them, Jackie. Go get them. He said, go get them. He said, go. He said, get up, Sonia. Go get them. Go after what God, go, go after a Matthew. Go get whatever God has told you is yours for this season of your life. Go get it. That degree, go get it. Go get it. Write the book, go get it. Go get your marriage back, go get it. And then God is so loving. He says, and they're going to they gonna come home with you. Ha, ha, ha. Ha. He said he gave him extra. God says, yep, and you're going to rescue all those who are taken captivity. David didn't even ask, am I going to be able to bring back my wife? Am I going to be able to bring back my kids? Am I going to be able to, to bring back the things that they took from me? David didn't ask that. He didn't ask that. But God loves us so much that he will give you additional information when you come inquiring. How many times have you said that how many times have you have you said to your children, if you just would have asked me, you didn't have to do X, Y, and Z. You know, I, they, they sneaking cookies out the pantry when they was little, whatever. You, all you had to do was ask me. If you had a wayward child and they were the type of child that would go in your purse and, and, and take money or go to the store with you and you know how much change you're supposed to get back, but they act like you don't know how to count. And, <laughs> and they bring you back less than they're supposed to. And you say, all you got to do is ask me. God is telling you this morning, all you got to do is ask me. That's all you got to do. Just ask me. And I will, give, I will tell you exactly what it is you are to do. Good morning. He said, I'll tell you exactly what it is you have to do. And when I tell you what to do, I'm going to tell, give you, I'm going to give you more. That is the grace of God. That is the love of God this morning. He wants to not only answer you, he will give you more. Now, we know there are times that we ask God things and he don't respond. 
He just wants us to trust him and have a knowing in our spirit. He wants us to learn how to wait on him and be of good cheer until he says pursue. Now, what this looks like to me in this text is that God's answer was om uh, was oh, immediate. Good morning, uh, uh, a prophet, apostle. Uh, so it looks like in, 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 in 1 Samuel chapter 30 that God immediately responded to David. Now, remember who David was. Remember who David was. David sent Bathsheba's husband to the front line. R remember who David was now. Remember who David was now. The, 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 the whole crux about David is that David was a man after God's own heart. Is there anybody this morning? who is a man or woman after God's heart this morning, who says, that was me. That was me. When, when I do wrong, God, it's me. It's me. I'm standing in need of prayer. I'm raggedy. I'm out of order. I need help. I need you to help me. I want my hands clean. I want my heart pure. God, in the name of Jesus, help me. See, see, I know, I know that I have been saved from myself time and time again because I'm not foolish enough to not call out to God for help. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. See, this is what I recognize. I am, uh, uh, Isaiah said, I am a woman who is un a man, in Isaiah's case. I am a woman, a man who is unclean and I dwell among those who are unclean. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. When you are able to look at yourself, God says, that's a man, that's a woman after my own heart. Because they don't, they ain't puffed up. They know their dirt going back to dirt. Their dust going back to dust. Hallelujah. Yeah, ashes to ashes. Good morning, Brother Dwayne. And dust to dust. Hallelujah. That's why, sh thank you. I thank God for every compliment. I thank God for every encouragement. I thank God for people who, who look to me for advice, for wisdom, for coaching, for mentoring. I, I thank God. But I'm dust going back to dust, just like you. And this is why David was a man after God's own heart, because he recognized, I'm just a man. I'm just a man. I'm, I'm, I'm just a man who, you, who you've gifted. I'm, I'm just a woman that you've given talents and abilities and gifts to. I, I'm, just, I'm just a man who knows how to speak well. I'm, I'm just a man who got a little bit of muscles on me, a little handsomeness and a little anointing. Hallelujah. I'm just a woman who you've given a little bit of beauty to, a little bit of uh, sass and pizzazz and hallelujah in the name of Jesus and anointing. Hallelujah. I, okay, we just dust going back to dust and when you recognize that you have nothing you ain't you that cuteness you got that that outward poker tooth you got that that little cut six pack or however many packs you got whatever you got going on the only reason you got it is because god gave it to you i tell people all the time good genes and jesus good god almighty good genes and jesus and i'm not talking about levi's i'm talking about g-e-n E S good genes and Jesus, not necessarily in that order, but it is because of that, that you, you have what you have. It is the anointing of God it is the grace of God It is the blessing of God. And so because of this, this relationship that you have with God allows you to come to him and ask him for whatever you need. I need an answer. Do I pursue? Do I go after that job? Yeah, I know I only got a college education or a high school education. I know I only got a bachelor's degree. And I know that job says they want somebody with a, 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 a master's degree. And I only have a bachelor's degree. But God, do I go after that? And you get a peace in your spirit. Mm -hmm. He may not even say nothing. But you, you just know, okay, I'm going to go after that. And then you get it and people are like, girl, you got that job, man. You got that job. Yep, sure did. God did it. Give him glory. Give him glory, then the next time he'll answer even quicker. Sometimes the answer is in God's silence because you got to know in here and not up here. You got to know in here and not up here. Ah, somebody wants somebody to draw closer to God this morning. Tag somebody, share somebody, share with somebody, invite somebody, pursue this morning. God is inviting you to pursue. God isn't telling you to get up 
and pursue. God is commissioning you to go after what he has put in you to do. Pursue. Somebody say pursue. I'm a pursue. I'm going after this thing. I am going after and going to get everything that the Lord has promised me. Pursue means to follow hard after. It means to follow hard after until you catch up with the thing that you're pursuing so you can overtake it. You follow hard after getting that degree. I know it's taking you a long time. So what? You keep following hard after it. You keep studying. You keep going to school. You keep, okay, you can't carry a full load, fine. Take two classes, take three classes, take one class. Pursue, follow hard after it until you overtake it. Stop letting depression and worry and lack overtake you. God wants you this morning to know that you can pursue. But the first thing you have to do is ask God. You got to ask God. You got to ask God, what is it that I'm to do? And then when he tells you to do it, you need to obey. And you must do it all by faith. So the Lord says, pursue them. Pursue them. He said, and you will certainly overtake them and you will succeed in the rescue. You will get back everything that the enemy stole. When you pursue, okay, you know, I, I'm, I'm grateful in this sense that I'm not, I'm not a person that has a bunch of credit card debt. That ain't my thing. My thing is them dang on student loans and we still declare supernatural debt cancellation i say it all the time student loans are of the devil and so pursue good morning brother michael pursue pursue this morning pursue if that means you have to go talk to a credit counselor to create a plan so you can whittle down your debt pursue and if it takes you five years to whittle it down 10 years whatever it is pursue don't get discouraged. Don't let the enemy tell you, this is too much. I can't do this. You got 20 pounds to lose. You got 50 pounds to lose. You got 100 pounds to lose. Take this out your diet. Take Pursue. You, you turn the tables on the enemy that tells you, you got to eat another Twinkie. <laughs> you pursue. And you say, no, 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 no. I'm not going to do that because I need... I need to win the battle in this because when I lose this, diabetes is going to go away. When I lose this, the inflammation in my ankles is going to go away because I got too much weight on my body and it's putting pressure on my knees and my back. And the, You feel me? Pursue. It's not just the, the enemy that's human. Sometimes the enemy is with enemy. You got to pursue pride in you. You got to pursue that nasty attitude in you. You got to pursue that, that fear that's in you. You need to turn the tables this morning on the enemy that keeps telling you what you can't do. That you won't get the victory. You didn't win the last time. I know you asked her to come back home, but she didn't come home. If God said, go get her, go get her. I know you went to him and said, baby, I want you to come home. Me and the kids miss you, honey. We Okay, and he still won't come home. He's still at that woman's house. Y'all better learn how to pray, honey. See, I'm about to help men. Don't get scared. Don't get scared. But I'm going to teach y'all women how to pray. He laid up with somebody else. You start praying it won't work when he's laid up. The only person it's going to work with is you because you his wife. And that's the only person it's supposed to work with. Pursue. Pursue in prayer. Come on. We're talking about somebody committing adultery. He keep raising and putting his hand up on you. Hallelujah. God, every time he try to do it. Hallelujah. It, it, his hand gets stuck. <laughs> Hallelujah. You ever try to do something hit yourself in the head? Good God Almighty. She always got a harsh word. She negative. Pursue. Pursue and speaking life into what her words will be that will be different. You got children who are wayward. Pursue. Pursue. Go get God. Okay, I'm tired of going to get them out the crack house. I'm tired of going to rescuing them every time they sneak out the window with their little teenage self and trying to run away and trying to go be with somebody else and do stuff they ain't got. Pursue in prayer. Pursue on your knees. Ask God for the strategy. Ask God what it is you're to do to turn that situation around. You need to pursue in prayer. And pursuing in prayer is you asking God, what is it am I to do? 
And then if you think there is something, this is what I want to achieve. God, is this your will? Is this your will? Is this what I'm supposed to do? Am I to pursue? Am I to attack? Am I to go get that? Am I to go? So you ask God, pursue in prayer. God tells David, go. He says, go and you will certainly have the victory. Now, this is what blessed me. This is what blessed me. Now, this is what you also need to understand. Zig lag, zig lag, literally means the press of God. It literally means the press of God. You are in the press. You are in the press. You are right smack dab in the middle of the press. And you going to have to learn how to press. You don't even realize you're in the middle of the press. The very place that David lived in. Good morning, pumpkin, Julia. The very place that David lived in. The very place that his children and wives were, were taken captive and was burned down was a place called press. Now, you need to understand. There is no oil that comes out of the olive unless it's pressed. For you to get to where God needs for you to be for this next season of your life, it's going to require that you are pressed. The oil has to be pressed out. It has to be broken. The olive has to be broken so that the oil can come out and it goes through a press. One day I'm going to talk to you about the press. The press of how the anointing oil is, is created. It, it's, you got to go through the press. You Sometimes see, we feel like we're living in the press. Well, that is exactly where David lived. He lived in the place called press. Sometimes your anointing, the call on your life, the giftings on your life require that you have to press. Zick lag. You must press. You got to press in it so you can press through it. You got to press in it so you can press through it. We say this all the time. It was a press to get to church. Why don't we say it was a press to get to work? <laughs> we say it was a press to get to church. Yeah, it, it can be a press to get there. Why? Because the enemy never wants you to get to a place where you find victory. He never wants you to get to a place where you find the answer. He never wants you to get to a place that God can speak to you. So right there in the midst of the people wanting to stone David, where he wanted to give up, where he wanted to throw in the towel, David had to press. And so do you. You must press. You must press so that you can pursue. You must press so that you can pursue. You, I'm going to say it again. You must press so that you can pursue. So you can go and get the thing and the things that God has promised for you. You got to press. Oh my God. You got to press. Sometimes press looks like staying up later to get something done that you should have had done three days ago. But now you got to press to get it done because you're, you're running up on a timeline. Sometimes press means that you got to get up at that third watch or that, that, that 3 a.m. call to pray. You, Because you got to press so you can hear God. Sometimes that press is, yeah, you may have to work some extra hours so that you can get some more money so that you can pay that off. But when you get more money, you're going to bring more tithes in. So you got to press. David lived in the place called press. And so do some of you. And in that moment, when you need God to answer you, you got to press. What, what did Jacob say? I'm going, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm not letting you go until you answer me. I'm not letting go until you answer me. Job said, I'm going to wait until my change comes. Who is that this morning? That you need to wait until your change comes. You need to press in the wait. You need to press and make yourself wait. Nope, I'm going to wait right here. I'm going to wait right here. If I got a rock, I'm going to wait. If I got a hum, mm, Jesus, I'm going to wait. Wait, if I got a speaking tongues until it happens, I'm going to wait. I'm not moving. I'm not moving, God, until you answer me. Hallelujah. I'm not moving until you tell me what to do. I'm going to keep coming. In this text, David asked one time and God gave him the answer. But if that means you got to be like Paul, 
I asked three times. I asked four times. I asked six times. Whatever it is, God, I'm going to keep asking. I'm not moving. I'm not moving. I, and I'm not talking about uh, uh, stale waiting. There's, there's something called active waiting. You can actively wait. You can be doing what you know to do until God tells you what to do. That was good. That's a tweetable. Woo, Jesus. You can, you can do what you know to do until God tells you what to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, but if he tells you to sit, to, to, to just keep moving, keep moving. Step by step, I'm going to bring you out. Little by little, I'm going to bring you out. You do what the Lord tells you to do. So first, before you pursue, you need to ask God. You pursue in prayer. God, what is it that you would have for me to do? And then if there's something specific, good morning, Sister Vicky. Good morning, Brother Robert. Good morning, Sister Linda. If there is something specific that you know you are to do, you ask God. If you want to do, as David, he was specific. God, do I pursue? Do I go after this? And will I get the victory? God, am I to go back to school? And if I do, am I going to graduate? And God will come back and say, yeah, and you're going to graduate with honors. <laughs> He'll give you more. Uh-huh. Go on. Go back to school. Go back to school. Get that degree. Uh-huh. Go ahead and do that. He said, yep, yeah, and you're going to graduate with honors. You're going to be top of your class. He'll give you some more to encourage you, to let you hold on a little longer. Hallelujah. And I don't know why this is coming to me, but when I think about Abraham, now Abraham didn't have to ask God, do I need to have sex with my wife so that I can have a child? No, he didn't need to do that. He didn't need to do that. <laughs> right? He didn't need to do that. He knew he had to have sex with his wife so that he could have a child. See, God had already promised him, you will have a son. He had already said it. He had already told him. He had already told uh, uh Sarah, he had already told him. So I ain't got to ask you the obvious. So you do what you know to do until God tells you what to do. I just helped somebody right there. Do I have sex with my wife so I can have a child? Yes! <laughs> Good God Almighty. Do I need to change my diet so I can lose weight? Duh. Yeah. Come on. Do I need to apply for that job? So that I can get it. Hello. It's some stuff you ain't got to ask God about. So you do what you know to do. When, as you wait on God to tell you. What to do. Do what you know to do. As you ask God. And wait on him to tell you. What else to do. Good God Almighty. That's a good word. That's a word for me. I love Jesus this morning. So. He pursues. Top of your class with honors. That's right. Declare it. Declare it. So. So, here we go. The word says, good morning, classmate, Vicki Hudson. So, he says, God tells him to pursue. Now, this blessed me. As they were on their way to pursue the Amalekites. The Bible says, David and 600 of his men came with him. But some, they started the journey, but some were tired because they had just left another battle. And they were tired. And the Bible says... So only 200, 200 of them stayed back because they were exhausted. Listen, in this next season, you must accept the fact that everybody's not going with you. They might start out with you, but they ain't going to finish. It's okay. You pursue. You don't stop. People going to school with you, they start. What did they used to tell us when we got to high school? Look to your right, look to your left. One of them people ain't going to be there. They used to tell us that. I don't know that that wasn't very encouraging. I don't know why they said that now that I think about it. But anyway, so somebody's going to fall out. Somebody ain't going to make it across through the valley cuz they had to go they had to go through this valley. And so everybody ain't going to make it out. Everybody ain't going to make it out. Everybody ain't going to make it through the press. Everybody ain't going ain't going to make it uh through the valley of the shadow of death. Everybody's not going to make it out. And so you have to accept uh, that you might have to go it alone. It may not be everybody you thought that was going to go with you. It is, you may not be. So the valley that they had to go through was called Besor. B-E-S-O-R. And, and, and by definition, listen, that, that valley meant cold. B-E-S-O-R. Besor. He, they had to go through the, the valley of coldness. Now, when you think about something being cold, don't you think about it being lonely? Don't you think about it being empty? Don't you think about it like it's, it's like, 
Yeah, it's cold. When you're cold, it's, if you feel like, oh, I just need to be warmed up, I feel. And, and when we want to be warmed, a lot of times we want to be warmed by somebody. You're going to go through cold seasons where you feel like you're alone. When you pursue, because sometimes people don't understand why you're pursuing. People don't understand why you're doing what you're doing. People don't understand why you're doing that. Why are you going there? Why you? Because this is what God told me to do. He didn't tell you to do it. Thank you for coming with me. Thank you for think for thinking enough of me to say, well, I'll, I'll take this. I'll take this journey with you. Now, those of you who are married, you need to be in agreement. But those of you who are single, God's told you to go do something. Go do it. Quit waiting on somebody. Okay, I'm gonna throw myself out here like I always do. I've said it before. When God told me years 2011 when I first started the Father Form. I was like, ah, okay, I did that for 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 uh, uh, my my uh, paper for my masters, for my thesis, and then he was like, keep doing it, okay. Then it was time to do a con a men's conference. I ain't doing no men's conference. Okay, God, I'll do a men's conference when I get married. What? I said pursue. Okay, God. Well, if and this is how I talk. Okay, God. Now, if I do this, I need at least these many men to come. Will these many men come? Pursue. Just go. Do what I told you to do, and more than what I thought came. And their responses to the conference was, uh, Dr. Tate, when are you going to do another one? Pursue. I'm telling you, when you obey God, you will get more than you ask for. The blessings of the Lord will make you rich and they will add no sorrow. So this place called Bezor, it means that it means uh, uh, it's cold. It's a place that is cold. It is a place that is without. It is a place that you may feel like there's no life here. Okay? It, it's a it however, now let me say this. Let me say this. Sometimes places that are cold are also refreshing. Did you hear me? Sometimes places that are cold are also refreshing. The air is clear. The air is crisp. Sometimes you need to get away so that you can think clearly. You need to separate yourself so that you can think clearly, so you can see clearly. So you can see clearly, so you can think clearly. Whichever comes first, sometimes that's required. That you have to let your your roadies and your... Uh, uh, Posse and all of your friends and your uh uh comp your your um what is the word Holy Spirit all those who roll out with you sometimes them numbers have to shrink so you don't have all those voices that hot air in your ear you need to go to a cool place you need to go to a place where you are off by by yourself or your numbers have shrunk so the Bible says and I'm I'm gonna wrap it up because we are we are on our hour. The Bible says that they go headed to this valley, this cool valley, uh, that, that actually the Bible says that it had cool, uh, refreshing springs. Even though it was a cold place, it also had refreshing springs. The Bible says that two of them stopped, 200 of them stopped and did not go on. But as they went, they ran up on an Egyptian. They ran up on a brother. They ran up on a black... Stop being afraid of black men. Jesus, whoever hears this and ain't African American. Sometimes your answer and your help is with them. So, the Bible says they found this Egyptian. They run up on this Egyptian. And his soldiers brought this Egyptian to David. And he's like, so, uh, was you with them? Was you, was you with the ones who, who, who took my family? He said, yeah, I know where they're at. He said... He, so David said, will you, will you take me to him? Listen, God is going to let you use your haters, your enemies, those who have come against you before. He's going to make them help you. He said, I'll make your enemies your footstools. He said, I require those. I will use those who have, who your enemy, your enemies will bless you. Your enemies will bless you. I need for you to look for the season to look in this season, in this time, that your enemies are going to bless you. That person that talked about you, that person that that made that that has something to say about your marriage ending, and now their marriage has ended, they're going to pursue you and say, I'm sorry. The person who all has something to say about all the stuff you was doing. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing this? Why are you over there? Why are you going back to school? Why are you staying with him? Why are you staying with her? Why are you giving them, Why are you at that church? Why are you, bring, why are you always tithing? Why are you always serving? All of them, they're going to come back. 
and they gonna say, girl, my bad. I can't even believe, man, that I was saying all that because this ain't no joke. God will use those who help to bring your demise to build you back up, to help you get the victory. And so because of that, this slave, this Egyptian man, he said, now listen, I'm going to help you, but don't, don't turn me over to, he wasn't even, he, he wasn't even tripping. He wasn't, he was less afraid of David than he was going back into his own camp. <laughs> he was, he was, cause he was a slave to them people. He said, I don't want to go back there. I'll shoot. I'll stay with you, David. I, I mean, I know I was a part of, of with them, but I'll stay with you. Have grace in your heart when they come back. To forgive. When God tells you to pursue. And there are relationships. God wants you to pursue. Listen to me. Again. I'm not talking about the person that's being abused. And beaten. Talked crazy to. In any way you are being abused. Emotionally. Physically. Spiritually. Financially. Mentally. In any way. I'm not talking about you going back into a bad situation. But there are relationships with parents. There are relationships with children. There are relationships with spouses. There are relationships with siblings. There are people that you need to go say I'm sorry to. And there are people that need to come and say they're sorry to you. And God's going to cause them to do just that. This morning God wants you to hear. You have been released to pursue. Ask God. What is it? Am I to do that? And if I do that, will I get this? And he's going to answer you. You put yourself in the right relationship, in the right posture with God. Recognizing that you're nothing without him. You really can't breathe without him, let alone make a move without him. And God will be faithful to answer you. And so, Father, I pray. I pray right now for your sons and your daughters. That when they seek your face, when we seek your face on what to do, how to do, when to do. That you will answer and you will answer quickly. God, I pray now come quickly, dear Lord. Move by the strength of your power. Hallelujah, God. Move by the strength of your power, God. Move by the quickness of your wind of the Holy Spirit to answer your sons and to answer your daughters this morning. Someone needs an answer on where is their child. Someone needs an answer on restore my marriage. Someone needs an answer on restore, hallelujah, my health. God, come quickly to answer, to heal, to restore, and then help them to obey without fear, to get up. David moved quickly to pursue. As soon as God told him, pursue, and you will recover all. And I'm going to give you this. He moved quickly. And I encourage you this morning. Move quickly. Move quickly. If that means you need to go forgive somebody. You need to go ask for forgiveness. You need to forgive. God said move quickly. And because of that, I'm going to answer. Because of your obedience, I'm going to answer. Because of your faith, I'm going to answer. And so, we thank God this morning. And we love him. I pray the blessings of the Lord over your life. And we thank you. We thank you for joining us for Fourth Watch Power Prayer Teaching. The Lord says the same. We will be back together next week. And I think I'm going to be coming from uh, another text in um, 1 Samuel. I'm pretty sure I will. So, I love you with the love of the Lord. And uh, we thank God. Amen. Thank you, Brother Rance. Uh, hey, hey, Jesse Sanders. Ain't heard from you in a while. Praise the Lord. Please go back. Uh, hey, Vet. Um, hey, Devante. Please go back and listen to the whole message. Um, I pray it encourages you. It is your time to pursue. Just ask God, be obedient, and walk by faith. And you will have exactly what God has told you you can receive. Pursue, turn the tables on the enemy and stop being scarred. Amen. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Have a great day. Oh, book signing. Um, 29th at uh, 3333 North Illinois um, here in Indianapolis for our next book. The Mornings After From Grief to Glory. Amen. With the forward by Marvin L. Sapp. 
I love you with the love of the Lord. Hope to see you on the 29th. And then our next book uh, project will begin um, October, November. And that book is Intentional Increase, Maximizing Your Talents. So if you are a businessman, a businesswoman, you stepped out on faith to pursue a, a, an, an uh, entrepreneurial vision, to pursue ministry, uh, you're advancing in your corporate job, you're advancing in your career, and you have a story that you want to help someone else to overcome. These are my uh, the authors. To help someone else overcome uh, their challenges so that they don't have to stumble and, and trip and they can get around the, the blockers and, and um, the hindrances that come to achieve ad, uh, advancement and success. If that's you and you have that story, I want to, you to have a, your story in our next book project. Um, and inbox me and we will go over the details. I'm looking for 12 people uh, to be in that book. Um, and that book will be uh, released in the spring. We will start on it before the holidays. Uh, and then we will release uh, in the spring with our own uh, book release for that book. And I'm excited about that because you are going to tell your story of what success looks like to you so that you can help other people achieve success. And you will share five to ten tips on how to get there. Amen. Because sometimes, particularly, I hate to say it, us is, us is us it says yeah we don't always want to share how to get there you know that whole crabs in a barrel thing so what we're going to do is share those tips with our brothers and our sisters so we can help them achieve quicker and when we do that our communities will grow our churches will grow our families will grow our wealth will come amen so um i look forward to hearing from you to be a part of that but again this book the book release is september the 29th 3333 north illinois uh, the Jewel Event Center here in Indianapolis from 1 to 4 p.m. Uh, there will be refreshments for those who get there early. Amen. Uh, pictures, book signings, the whole nine. So thank you so much for your support of all of our authors who are a part of this book. And uh, I love you with the love of the Lord. And I thank you. And thank you for joining me for Fourth Watch Prayer. I'll see you next week.